Hi everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. Today I wanted to do a quick update video on the Boba Fett armor because I finally finished with my rubber hand plates. Now if you didn't know, unlike Mando, Boba Fett actually has flexible rubber hand plates and so I wanted to try and recreate that as best as I could. It took a lot of trial and error. I've never really worked with casting rubber before, so this was definitely a learning experience for me, so I thought I'd just share that with you guys. So here is the master hand plate that I resin printed and smoothed out, and the mold that I made for it out of Rebound 25. I wasn't really sure on the best way to make a mold of this, so I just put some clay underneath it and then some silicone on top and so it's kind of a slush mold but the benefit is it's only one part now the casting rubber i'm using is called simpact 60a i got it from smooth on if you're not aware rubber is graded on its like flexibility and its rubberiness i don't think that's a word but how flexible it is 60a is kind of on the lower side but it's still got a little bit of firmness to it it's a one-to-one -one mixture so very easy but i'm just kind of eyeballing it in a small cup since i won't need much resin for a single hand plate now i knew i wanted to dye the rubber black so i didn't have to worry about painting at all so to do that i'm going to be using a so strong black and you really only need a drop of this stuff to make the rubber completely black so after pouring in the part a and part b I do a little drop of So Strong and then mix them all together for about a minute. After that, I just pour the rubber in the mold and then just kind of slosh it around, trying to keep an even thickness to all the parts. I think the label says it has a four minute pot life before it starts to thicken up. So I just kind of rotate it back and forth, trying to keep those two wings on the side as thick as I could, since I had a feeling those would be the weakest parts. And once the rubber starts to really thicken up, I actually set the mold upside down. So if the rubber does move anymore, it moves outward into those edge areas. The full cure time is at 48 hours, but I found that you could release it from the mold after around 24. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow and we'll see how this thing came out. Now, what I'm gonna do here, I wouldn't exactly recommend anymore. This was more of just experimenting with the process, but I wanted to kind of reinforce the hand plate. So I thought I'd put some fiberglass matting that I had laying around and just lay it inside and kind of cover it with a second coating of rubber. So my idea was that this matting would help reinforce the rubber to help protect it from damage or getting ripped at all, but it uh, did not go very well. I mean, the matting definitely helped reinforce it, but the second coating of rubber actually made it a bit too thick and a bit more rigid than I would have liked. It's not quite as flexible anymore as I had hoped. I'll kind of show you the difference between this one and another one that I did for like the right hand. That is just the initial pouring of rubber. Then I tried like adding the fiberglass matting on the first pour as it was kind of thickening up and that just went even worse. I couldn't get the matting to stay in place very well and it all kind of drooped and just dripped everywhere, but I'm still glad that I tried it. Here is kind of an evolution of the hand plate as it went along. The first one here, I just didn't use enough rubber, so it came out really, really thin. The second one, I actually tried using a mold release on the silicone mold, and it actually made these bubbles everywhere in the hand plate. Not really sure why that happened or what I could do to fix it, so I just went back to using the mold without the mold release. This next hand plate is the one with the fiberglass matting in it, a lot more rigid than I would have hoped, but this last one here, I feel like has a good flexibility and it's thick enough that it, you know, will survive. So once I had the hand plates that I liked, the next part was really easy. All I had to do was add some extra Velcro to the gloves. Now these gloves from Crow Props came with a small square of Velcro sewed in, but I wanted a little bit more so that I could attach the front of the hand plate to it so that once I close my hand, that rubber hand plate actually would uh, flex with my hand. Now this Velcro has a sticky backing, so all I had to do was cut out a small square and stick it right on the glove and it sticks on pretty well. Then it's just a matter of sticking the opposite side on the rubber hand plate. And again, the glue bonded very well to the rubber, so that came out very well. There you go, guys. Just a small part of the costume, but there's a lot of experimenting and trying out new things with this. I won't be selling any of these because honestly, the mold is starting to like rip apart due to the lack of mold release. And I'm really only able to make one hand plate a day. So not really something I feel comfortable putting out there. But you live, you learn, you try new things. That's all part of the fun of prop making. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. I'll see y'all in the next one.